Today I was tinkering around with one of my laptop batteries and I was just seeing if I could charge it directly without having to plug it into a computer. And I noticed something very odd. When you turn this potentiometer on my power supply, it goes through to 3.3, perfectly fine. Turn the big one, max is out at 2.2 volts. Should be 27 volts. Something's gone wrong to where now this 30 volt power supply only goes to 5.6 volts. This is very odd. So now this is measuring the amps. Yeah, it's not pulling much power at all. So that's good. That's how it normally operates. So this is this is operating perfectly fine. See, whenever you normally bring the voltage up, you have like zero to six volts and then when you pass like 6 or 8 volts or whatever, you hear the relay click in there, so that switches to like mode 2. And then whenever you go past like 22 volts or something, it's it, another relay clicks, and so it goes into like a mode, mode 3 or whatever, because I think there's three different circuits for three different voltages. And like whenever I connect this up, you can hear that the relay clicks because it goes from 0 volts to 11. very strange. I really don't know what's going on here. I'm thinking whatever is in between this potentiometer and controlling the transformer is not getting the signal of this going high enough or somehow it's not switching it to go to the other setting or the other mode or whatever. So here's the internals. Even though that it looks pretty cheaply made, it is pretty cheaply made, it's actually been very reliable and I've thrashed it pretty hard. I think one time I, l I let this sit putting two amps into a lead acid battery for three weeks straight. You can see here is a capacitor that I added to it because I the capacitor that was previously on there I accidentally reversed the polarity and fried it so I just added that on there and it's helped it. Because if it doesn't have this capacitor on there, the meter kind of gets messed up and the voltage fluctuates a lot. For some reason I was remembering this not having a blocky transformer in here. I was thinking it had a toroidal transformer in here. Oh well. As you can see back here, that really doesn't give much room to cool those transistors. It's kind of just like a big wall that blocks all the air. It's a bad design. It'd be good to drill some holes in, in there. They'd probably make it to where I could pull more than three amps from it. But I'm really not seeing much that went bad. So it would seem that these two relays are the ones that switch the modes. Like if both of these are off, then it goes to like zero to six volts. If one's on, then it goes six to 22 volts. And the other, if the other one's on, then it goes 22 to 33 or whatever volts it does. There we have the main board that has the LED displays on the side. Those variable potentiometers are kind of all over the place. That one in the middle is kind of just not really on the board. The front meter on this thing has always been like 0.2 of a volt off. So I think I'd probably fix that by adjusting these potentiometers in here. I've just been too lazy and, you know, 0.2 of a volt, it's, it's not really that big of a deal. There we go, so we can see the numbers, even though it's kind of reversed, but whatever. Now I'm just going to see if there's any loose wires back here, kind of mess with stuff. I hope it's just a wire, because then that would be easy to fix. Nope. 
Well, that's kind of cool to know. I could always take this transformer out and use that to give 10 volts, 22 volts, and 38 volts. That's pretty cool. It's all that it works on 110, 50 hertz instead of 110, 60 hertz. Because we have 60 hertz AC here. And I've heard that you, you shouldn't mix 50 hertz and 60 hertz, at least with ele electronics and stuff like that. Because the transformers are made differently. So that's odd. As you can see, the wire has gotten so warm that it's actually melted the edge of the relay, so that's not good. Looks like the wires weren't thick enough or something. Hmm. And that, that resistor looks like it's gotten hot enough to like kind of warp it, because sometimes when these res resistors get really hot, they kind of get a little like, wrinkly almost. At least I found they do. Okay, so these relays are SRD-12VDC-SL-C. That's just whatever whatever they are. And I looked up the data sheet, and it seems that they have five pins on each one. So this is one, and this is another one. Now how this works is these are the two outputs for the relays, and this is the input. You put power to, the, to these two pins, and that's the coil, coil that goes between these two pins. And then if, if it's off, this wire is connected to this pin. If the power between here turns the coil on, then it moves it not to this pin, but moves it to this pin. So the power goes through there. Well, I, I searched around a little bit. I was just kind of tracking tracking the pins around, and I think I found the issue. It's quite obvious. Look at that. I have a burnt trace there. Completely burnt away. That must have taken a lot of power. It's funny how I just didn't even notice that. <laughs> so I say I'll just get a little jumper and connect this side to this side and see if that fixes anything. Hmm. So something is shorting out that connection. So there must be something on here that's shorting it, and I found this. This capacitor is reading 0. Okay, 0. 0.2 ohms of resistance. It means it's shorted out. This other one, it's kind of weak. The, the big one here, this one. But... It seems to be okay. It's rated for 6,000 uh, microfarads. And my, and my reader only gives 2,200 microfarads. But whatever. If it still works, whatever. Okay, now it has 7 mega ohms of resistance. Something else is crossing over. It looks like it's okay. Hmm. So I've spent a couple hours and eh, I still haven't been able to find the issue. I put the capacitor back in and I think that just this isn't worth it. Because it still does have some functionality. It'll be great for recharging alkaline, nickel, cadmium, and lithium ion batteries. And the thing about these is they're just so cheap and cheaply made that it's easier just to get a new one every year. Because I only paid like $70 for this one. And I think I see some on eBay now for only $50. So I think it'd be a good idea just to get a new one. Instead of trying to fix the same one over and over again. So in the end, it has crippled itself, but I would say that it's really not worth fixing because it still does serve a purpose. I, 
there's been many times that I've wanted to have two power supplies. One for my regular experiments that go from 0 to 30 volts, but then just another one that just for batteries because sometimes when you when you have a bunch of batteries that you need to charge, it's annoying when you only have one power supply or whenever you're doing an experiment on your main power supply and you have to turn it off in order to charge batteries on it. Cause that, that, that can just be very annoying. But with this one, it still works perfectly fine up to 5 volts. Like I can charge this battery. See, it can still give 5 amps into it. So yeah, I think I'm just going to go on eBay and buy myself another one for like 50 or 60 bucks. Don't get me wrong, this is the cheapest bottom of the line piece of crap you can buy. But it's actually quite useful. It's, it's lasted me quite a while, and I definitely just buy the same one over and over again. Because I'd rather have a bunch of these that I could accidentally mess up instead of fucking up a really expensive one. Because I'm going to end up breaking one of these someday. Just like I probably broke this one somehow. Even though it was kind of just sitting on the bench and kind of broke itself. But whatever. I'd rather just buy a bunch of these and just like buy one every year and a half or whatever. Because this one's already lasted me almost two years. So I'd say like a year and eight months or so. I can't remember. But, oh well. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching. See ya!